I said there's a guy that I've been critical of that I probably need to be less critical of, and that's Brian Reynolds. I didn't realize this. You guys let me know if you are surprised by this. So Brian Reynolds, he's making a hundred million bucks. And with that comes, for me anyhow, really high expectations. Like a hundred million bucks ain't all that in a bag of chips in today's Major League Baseball, but for the Pirates, that's a lot of money. And he's got a 768 OPS. Doesn't seem all that great. He's hitting 267. Doesn't seem all that great, although it's better than what he's hit the last couple of years. But someone tweeted out, one of these Pirates bloggers, and now I forget who it was, so my apologies. He's in the top five in just about every National League outfielder category. Mm. He's fourth in NL, among NL outfielders in OPS. He's seventh at 267 in batting average. He's fifth in home runs with nine, and he's fifth in RBI. So what the hell have I been talking about? Brian Reynolds is a top five outfielder in the National League. That just came to be, though, because he's, got, he's gotten a little bit hot You're in the right last about like, that. two weeks. Yeah. The last two weeks, two, three weeks, maybe two and a half weeks, he's gotten hot. But if you do this before that, I bet you he was somewhat last. Yeah, he wasn't. No, this he is, wasn't this living is, up to it. This is very recent. Mm-hmm. And this is what he does. This is what he expected him to do. Like, he gets hot at certain points, and um, that's why they paid him that much money. But leading up to it, uh, I, I, I would be willing to bet that he was very, very low. Yeah, he probably was not. He definitely wasn't in the top 10 in any of those statistics. No. Probably far away from the, the top five, top 10 in those statistics. But this is what you expect from Brian Reynolds, is to be a top 10, maybe in some categories, top five outfielder in the National League. He needs to keep that going. And Nick Gonzalez, dude, has been unbelievably good. Is there any reason to believe Nick Gonzalez shouldn't keep this up? No. I don't think so either. Just how aggressive he is at the plate. Like mm-hmm. he just he is in command of what he wants to do at the plate every single time he gets up there. And and he uh, he like he comes through and you um, even whenever he gets up, like I have the confidence that he's gonna get a hit. It's like, okay, yeah, he's gonna get a hit. Like what can they do around that? Like he just, that's just how he how well he's playing right now. I have no like confidence to think that he would go backwards. Yeah. At this point. It's kind of amazing. He's their best hitter right now. Mm-hmm. And by a wide margin. Mm-hmm. Got an OPS of 850, an OPS plus a 140, which means he's 40% better than league average. He's hitting 312. This is what he's always done his entire life until last year. He didn't do it at the major league level. And you've got Jack Sawinski who, okay, yesterday nice, but he's been struggling. Nick Gonzalez has been the one pleasant surprise. And I just hope he can keep it up all season long. And O'Neill Cruz has really come around. Reynolds is on that 15-game hitting streak. You just want the rotation to get healthy. If the rotation can get healthy, you could kind of you can go on a little bit of a run here. The Mets have won 10 out of 14 games. Yeah. That's what we're waiting for from the Bucks. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if they're like under 500 at the deadline, but still in shouting distance. I don't know what Charrington's going to do. But if you win 10 out of 14 games, I think you're almost going to force his hand. That's what you got to do, and that's what you said last week. I kind of ran with that whenever you were out last week. I mean, you have to force his hand, and are they in that spot right now? I mean, they're they're making it a lot harder for themselves. They they definitely are, but they're close, I, I think. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying close to being like a playoff team or anything right now, but they're close to forcing the hand to say, if we add, this will be this will give us the best chance. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that they're like, I just don't know, but I I, I I go through waves just like everybody else. Like, I don't know what they are. I feel I, exactly the same way. Like, I almost want the season to be close to the end to see what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah. I really do because, like, I, just, I have no idea. I talked to a huge Pirate fan yesterday, uh, as we do, and he said, we're in this place right now where they're not a good baseball team. I mean, they're not above 500. They, they haven't been since the first – you know, two weeks of the season, but they're not bad. So you're hanging on every pitch. You're watching every game. You're caring about every game. And they've been up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. They're not winning five games in a row. I haven't done that uh, since the beginning of the season, since they started, what, 5-0. and like, They are maddening right now. And some of the things that they do, Doran, 
to your point, mm-hmm. make me want to pull my hair out. After they beat the Cardinals in the Skeens game, that was a hell of a baseball game, low-scoring game, and it felt like in June as close as you're going to get to a playoff game. It's against a team that you hate. And I'm thinking, okay, you won that game, and you you beat the Cardinals, and you kind of felt the whole way, oh, the Cardinals are going to win this thing. You're going to do the Cardinal thing. They don't. And I was as high on the Pirates after that game as I've been all season long, and then you lose the next two. And then you have a bullpen game. And then you lose 16-4. to four. And then whatever the hell happened yesterday happened, and they win the game, and it's 8-2. to two, But still, I mean, it's a bullpen game, and Brule's out there, and Josh Fleming, and... I know this isn't good talk radio. I don't know what to think. I don't either. Because you look at the bottom of their lineup yesterday, and that's not a playoff team, but they're a game out. So you consider, just like the Reynolds talk, man, you look at Reynolds at face value and you go, eh, do you feel like he's having an elite season? No. But compared to the rest of the league, he kind of is. You watch the Pirates. Are they a good baseball team? No. But is anybody? No. No. The Mets were left for dead. They're a game and a half out of a playoff spot right now, which that kind of sucks because I was hoping Pete Alonso and J.D. Martinez would get traded. Yeah, I don't know that they're going to be.